What's going on everybody, Wayne's Workshop here, and uh, this little printer is the CR30, also known as the Creality 3D Print Mill, and this is not going to be a video of how to build this whole thing. Uh, there are plenty of videos uh, on that already, I'll link the one I used in the description, but what this video is going to be about is, will this machine uh, fit or suit your needs, or your business needs, or your cosplay needs, so let's get into that. So, uh, you don't have to see that this printer is vastly different from the standard printers we're all used to by now. This is the Ender 3 Pro, you know, you've got your X and Y, and you've got your Z that goes, that goes up and down. Uh, with this, it's a totally different ballgame. With the 3D print mill, the width of your belt is the X axis and the part that goes up and holds the carriage is your y-axis. The x is about 20 centimeters, 200 millimeters wide, and the y goes up about 170 millimeters. And the belt itself, as it moves, as it shifts per layer away from the printhead, that's your z. And since it's a belt and it can just run off the printer, on, for example, this, this roller attachment that I got uh, attached to it. Uh, it. It just goes on infinitely, which of course opens up many, many possibilities. Think like uh, this M8 Avenger from Mass Effect, and this is only printed in two pieces, the left half and the right half. And you can see a time lapse of that right now. And uh, yeah, it failed uh, one time when this was my first print and I kind of had some bed uh, adhesion issues, which are now fixed and it's all printed and I epoxied it together and it's a uh, one sturdy print. Or like even longer is this God of War Leviathan X. Uh, the entire handle is printed in one go. The centerpieces were on my Elegoo Mars and the axe head was on my CR10, but the entire handle, and I'm not a small boy, but uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is one pretty long print and that is all in one go on the CR30. But the real benefits of this machine is the looping capability. So for example, you need this God of War handle three times. Maybe you're selling 3D prints of a, of a Leviathan and you need several prints. You can do that. You can just slice this handle and in your G code, you can set the amount of times it will loop or even infinite loops and we'll just keep going and keep going because that that Z, that belt is infinite and will keep going and going up until your filament uh, roll runs out. But with the runout sensor, it will just pause the print, you pop on a new roll of uh, filament and you're good to go again. Now, my machine is close to stock. The only thing that I changed is the Capricorn tubing. Let's put that <laughs> axe away for now. The only thing that I changed is the standard PTFV tube. I took off right away and changed it with some Capricorn tubing because I want to print with uh, PETG. PETG prints at a much higher uh, temperature point and the normal PTV tube would kind of melt and, and, and and be brittle and go into my hot end and cause clogs with the Capricorn tubing. Uh, you won't have that. And I printed this little piece that you see right here, which enabled me to move the entire stepper motor and with the Bowden on it and the filament runout sensor. I could move that from the original carriage that it's uh, mounted on and I can move it to the other side and that clears up enough space that you can uh, fit a two kilo spool uh, on the side of this machine and then you can run your loops twice as long because you have, well, instead of one kilo, you have two kilos of filament. Alternatively, of course, you can just print a uh, five kilo uh, spool holder. Those are plentiful on Thingiverse, you know, the ones with the bearings. You can just plant your giant spool next to your machine and have it feed into it and, and run extremely long prints or a, a lot of loops. You, you can really get crazy with that. But now it comes down to it, is this printer what you need? 
Well, if you run a business next to your cosplay hobby or your maker hobby, then wholeheartedly, I would say yes. For example, if you sell 3D prints of cosplay weaponry and you'd have, you have multiple orders of, let's say this M8 Avenger gun, or when Overwatch 2 uh, drops and you have like Tracer's gun. Tracer carries two guns already and they're the same. Let's say you have multiple orders of that, you can just run that same gun off of the 3D print mill, pop on a big spool and just run it for six times and you've fulfilled three orders already. So from that perspective, Yes. Or if you're like me and I sell the Costronica Smoke Type 1, Type 2, Costronica Thrusters, my pocket smoker, all sorts of uh, devices that require a lot of cases. And those cases I can just pop on here. And that's the main reason why I bought the 3D print mill is I can pop, for example, the pocket smoker case on here, pop on a fresh roll. Of, of two kilo of PETG and just run it on infinite loops. And then the next day I come in and I have a surplus of, of cases and I never run out of cases anymore because I didn't start my CR10, which is only limited space for X amount of cases. And this one can just go on and on and on. I can not go to the shop for two days and, and this one will continually pop out those cases over and over and over again until I say stop or that the filament roll runs out. But the bonus for me is that I can print long cosplay weapons and well, yeah, that's not my primary reason. The primary reason is for me the cases, but big cosplay weapons could be the primary reason for you. Because what if all that business stuff and all that nonsense doesn't apply to you and you just 3D print for yourself or maybe for your cosplay group and you just keep it like that? Uh, yeah, you can still get it, of course, but then the price point is a thing. According to a local European retailer of 3D printers and 3D print parts, uh, 3D Jake, when this printer drops in around September, it's retailing for around 1100 euros. Now that's a pretty hefty uh, sum to drop for, well, a piece of tech that is also fairly new. For that one printer amount of money, you could even get two Ender 5 Pluses, which are huge in its own right, or even you could almost get six Ender 3 Pros. That's, that's crazy. If you're just printing for you or your group of cosplay friends, you'd be better off buying that or each buying a printer than only one 3D print mill. And while this machine has many great benefits, the build size other than the Z is still limiting. Uh, don't forget the X or the width is only 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. You can only go up for about 17. That's not really gonna fit are all yeah, well, barely gonna fit maybe a helmet like this this is a star booster uh, helmet and yeah it it can but you know maybe you got a got a big head I know I have this one doesn't even fit me and something like this could fit easily on a Ender 5 plus but then again using that same example something like the Leviathan can't go in one go uh, on the Ender 5 Plus. And, and sure, you could uh, chop it down and, and a lot of files, and including this one, when you buy it on sites like, uh, like Etsy, um, it already comes chopped up and then you could fit it, fit it even on, a, uh, on something like an Ender 3 Pro, but then you have to glue the whole thing together again. You have glue lines, you have to sand those down as well and fill and sand and fill and sand, you know the deal. And for pieces that are printed in one go, you don't have that again. So yeah, you gotta outweigh your pros and cons here. So let's say you jump the gun now and you're convinced, maybe because of this video, it's like, I need a 3D print mill. Some things to note, while I love this machine, some things were not so great. Uh, the first print I did was the M8 Avenger. And while that was printing, uh, the coupler on the Bowden clip, the, uh, the teeth that are holding the PTFE tube inside, they just snapped. 
and it was feeding out filament and it was just, it was a long print, just failed uh, for nothing. I replaced it because they added two spare couplers and I found it odd that you already give me two spares, so you, have, so you have like three couplers total for the same Bowden and I'm like, okay, you know, it can break, it can happen. So I replaced it with, with the spare, with one of the spares they gave and then on the first print of this Leviathan handle, it happened again. So that tells me it's already absolute crappy quality regarding the, uh, the couplers, which is strange because the rest of the machine is built like a rock. It's, it's sturdy, it's heavy, it doesn't move or jiggle or whatever, but then, then they add such shitty quality couplers. I ended up changing mine, like this one right here. I replaced that one and I've, I've never had any problems since. I've, I've reprinted the handle, uh, I've looped I don't know, a gazillion cases by now again, and now it's busy with the uh, thermal katana from Cyberpunk, even though that never made it into the game officially, but that's printing now, so if you get this printer, change out, especially that coupler on the Bowden. Maybe it was a one-off, but I had two break on me, so that was enough for me, like, change the couplers. And the other thing to note is, this is new tech this is a belt printer. And while the support group, uh, the Discord group for the CR30 is great, uh, you pretty much can't beat the amount of support and old threads with maybe your problem and solution on the internet regarding, for example, the Ender 3 or the CR10. There are Facebook groups, entire Reddit, uh, subreddits on it. It, it. The support is so insanely huge on, for example, those machines. And because this is new and people are running into things that they don't know the, the possible fix for because a lot of, and this was the warning even Creality gave, a lot of knowledge that you have on standard printers like this don't translate all that well onto the 3D print mill because of that switch, uh, because it's basically moved 45 degrees. Uh, a lot of knowledge does help because you know you got that fix it mentality, but you have to know that before purchasing this. If you have no 3D printing experience whatsoever, this is not the machine to get uh, for the first time. The price point is high and it is uh, more difficult to get into than let's say your Ender 3 Pro. I hope this video gave you some insight about this machine and if it will suit your needs for the price point it will retail for. I'm still learning about this machine as well so if you have uh, any questions regarding the 3D print mill drop it down in the comments below and I'll do my best uh, to answer it at the best of my capabilities. So thanks again for watching and and uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. I like explaining tutorials with an axe. It's uh, nice. <laughs>